Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. You can't hear me now. You now you can hear me. Okay. Oh boy, what was that about? That was ridiculous. Okay, so that was a long, crazy thing for nothing. Um, I don't know what made that happen. Hi, everybody. All right, so I'm just um. Going crazy. My glasses are filthy. Hi, Sharon, Antibone, Jen Doe, Carla, Susie B, Sharshar, Larky, Whisper to Me, Henny, Amy, Celeste, everybody, uh, Kevin Leonard. Let's see here. Sue W. And do you review Kleiner Detective? I said that Dean Elizabeth. I mean, wow, that was nuts. Okay, Carla, Carly, Sharshar, Kevin, Nanati, Amy Celeste, Henny, Danielle, Sean, Lisa Hobbs. Oh, uh, it's Antipone Whisper to Me, Nightbot, Kevin, Dev on the Move, Nicole Griffith, Debbie L. Sure, sure, I got right and everybody. We kind of detective high 61. Sandra, hey there, Sandra, how are you doing? Um, you're tired? Good luck to you. Good, good, good night. Okay, I'm back on, but I have, um, oh my gosh, okay. It sounded better when you bent down to the floor, but at least we could hear you. You can't hear me well now, um, Henny? Hi, Mimi, Kim Miller. Can you hear me well now or not? Tell me, because if you can't hear me well, I'm about had it then, if you can't hear me well. Uh, you all, I've had the scariest evening. I got a call about my 15-year-old daughter. She's 2,100 miles away from me, and she's in the ER for a suicide assessment. Has been five hours. Her dad's not responding to me. I'm sick. Well, are you able to call the hospital and speak with her? And I'm really sorry. I hope everything works out for you, guy. For you, I mean that's really scary. But at least she's in the hospital, and hopefully they, you know, will keep her there. I move to. I sound fine. Okay. So I was looking at this. Um, Transcript, well, not transcript, I'm sorry. Court document um, from the state of New York, the county of Oneida, which is upstate New York, Oneida County. And it's a trial brief. And for all the um, sticklers, this is public information. This is a matter of a public matter it's public freedom of information act and fair use act okay this court document is available anywhere oneida county court and this is in the case of mary yoder so i don't know if you know about mary yoder and this was the people of the state of new york versus caitlin conley so i just wanted to go through this as a kind of an interesting case so I'm just going to read the court document as it is. And again, matter of public interest to matter of public knowledge. Mary Yoder reveals symptoms of what later is found out to be coal, no, I'm gonna, colchicine poisoning on the afternoon of July 20th, 2015. She dies from the toxin approximately 40 hours, 48 hours later in the hospital. After she dies, there is a celebration of life for her 
on July 25th, 2015. Her husband and son leave shortly after that celebration of life. And um, they go, they leave for a trip to Arizona. And Mary's daughter, Liana, goes back to Long Island. Caitlin Conley grieves along with the Yoder family. Now, Katie is a well-liked employee of whom the Yoders are all very fond. She was very close to Adam Yoder, the son of Bill and Mary Yoder. Now, this is really funny because it's not really funny. Um, I'm trying to think of something because I knew a woman... Her name was Mary Yoder. Oh my gosh. I wonder, this is her son. Hold on, I got it. That is so strange, no wonder. Oh my gosh. Okay, I know this lady. I knew the name was the same name as she had. I used to work with this lady. Okay, that is really, oh, wow. And Adam was her son. Wow, this is really crazy. Okay. All right, so, um, so Caitlin worked for the family. She was very close with Adam the son of Bill and Mary Yoder. In fact, she dated him right after high school and continued to have a close relationship even after she terminated the relationship in August of 2014. After the reasons for her breaking up with Adam, among the reasons for her breaking up with Adam was the fact that he arred her in July of 2014, but also because he was violent, abusive, manipulative, and unstable and had serious problems with alcohol. The cause of Mary Yoder's death due to colchicine poisoning was not determined and made known to the Yoder family until September 17th of 2015. And it was on that date that the Yoders, including Mary's several sisters, found out that Mary's death had a mysterious twist in, the, in that somehow the poison was ingested by Mary. The cause of Mary's death spread like wildfire, but... How was it ingested? Accidentally or intentionally? But if intentionally, by whom? On September 21st, 2015, Adam Yoder drove Katie Conley to the office in his Jeep Wrangler because he wanted to ransack the office in what he claimed to be a search for evidence to determine his mother's death. This included his desire to rummage through patients' files. Katie, who was still employed at the practice, objected to this raging frenzy of Adam and did not participate in his activities. Adam's sister, Liana, and his father, William, both concurred with Katie that Adam was out of line, and when Adam threatened to have Katie fired, if she didn't cooperate with him, William told Katie that she was in charge and that Adam was in the wrong and she didn't have to worry about her job. On or about October 15th of 2015, Mary's sister, Sharon Mills contacted the Oneida County Sheriff's Department over her concerns that nearly a month had gone by and Mary's immediate family had done nothing as far as contacting law enforcement about the mysterious way that Mary died. Sharon and her sisters, Janine and Sally, impressed to investigators Nelson and Van, ne Van Nene that they believed Mary's husband William had a motive to kill Mary because almost immediately after his wife of nearly 40 years died, he got involved with their sister, Kathy Richmond, in a physical relationship. On or about November 23rd of 2015, an anonymous letter was received by the... It says, this is, they have, this is not written correctly, it says, but received by to the Oneida County Sheriff and the Onondaga County Medical Examiner. The letter was probably mailed on November 20th of 2015. The letter told the police that Mary Yoder died from colchinine poisoning and that Adam 
Adam Yoder had told the letter writer that he was responsible for the death and that he regretted it. He told the letter writer that he put the colchinine in one of Mary's vitamin supplements when he was at her house a month or two prior to her death. When the letter writer last saw Adam, he was agitated and said he, he was the reason for her death and he wished that he could take it back. He felt that his mother was unfair to him and felt that she should have helped him more. The letter also indicated that the bottle that contained the colchidine was under the front seat of Adam's Jeep Wrangler. The letter writer stated the reason for writing anonymously was out of fear of Adam because the letter writer is still very close to him and believes he would be capable of future harm. On December 8th of 2015, the police searched Adam's Jeep and found the practically empty bottle of colchicine under the front passenger seat of his vehicle, as the letter had stated, it would be located. Photos were taken of the items in Adam's car, including items under the front seat that included the bottle that contained the colchicine. On December 16th, Katie Conley was interviewed by the police and told them that on July 20th, Mary Yoder had planned on having lunch at her mother's home in South Utica. She left the office at 12.30 p.m. and had appointments starting at 1.30 p.m. Katie said that Mary usually brought vitamin supplements from her from home and usually had a protein shake mixed with almond milk at the office. But on this occasion, she had planned on having lunch with her mother. This was very common. Katie said Mary's mother already had lunch, so Mary made a sandwich for her mother for later. We don't know if Mary had a shake at her mother's or if she had a shake at the office or if she had a shake at all. In her statement on December 16th of 2015, Katie said she assumed Mary had a shake at the office. It is the prosecution's theory that during the time frame, Katie put powdered colchicine in Mary's shake for the purpose of killing Mary and that she planned the murder of July 20th, 2015, starting from September 14th, 2014, when the Gmail account was created. On December 21st, 2015, investigators Nelson and Van Nemi interrogated Katie Conley. Katie admitted that she authored that anonymous letter. She tells them that her relationship with Adam and how he arred her in July of 2014, and she reported it November of 2014 to the Sheriff's Department. Van Nemi tells her that he believes her. In Adam's statement to the police on February 12, 2016, he claims that he was blind drunk and doesn't remember the incident but claims it was consensual. He further states he denies the R charge in a phone call on November 18, 2014 that was recorded by investigator Christopher Ferguson. The phone call is not only consistent with Adam Yoder's version that he depicts in his statement, but also helps to explain why Katie was afraid of Adam and rebuts the prosecution's evidence of motive. She was physically bruised as a result of that R. The sheriff's office dissuaded her from pursuing the prosecution because he controlled, because the, excuse me, the controlled phone call didn't result in an admission by Adam. And she was reluctant to trust the law enforcement would believe her now because they didn't pursue Adam in the past. And during the December 21st, 2015 interrogation, it was further revealed that Mary Yoder was aware of the fact that her son, Adam, Ard Katie, and that she believed Katie when Katie told her. In the first trial, Adam Yoder testified that he ended the relationship with Katie in August of 2014 because he claimed she cheated on him. The prosecutor argued that Katie was desperate to win him back and that he continuously rejected her, leaving her to be a woman scorned and providing a motive to kill his mother so Adam would come back to her. As ludicrous and preposterous as this may sound, this was the evidence the prosecutors put forth as a motive for Katie to plan on killing Mary in September of 2014. The prosecutor spends considerable time and resources in trying to prove that Katie Conley alone decided to order colchicine for the sole purpose of killing Mary Yoder because she was rejected by Adam Yoder and no other reason existed to order it. 
The fact of the matter is that Katie rejected Adam after he arred her, and his mother knew it. Adam was a troubled child, and this information was given to the police in the anonymous letter that um, had they only conducted an open-minded investigation instead of jumping to the conclusion that Katie wrote the anonymous letter and must have planted a bottle of cochicine in Adam's car to frame him for the death of his mother and that no other reason could exist for ordering cochicine. That's the conclusion Nelson and Van Nemi jumped to. The one possibility that was never explored by the investigator was the most obvious one, that everything in the letter was true. When the bottle of cochicine is discovered in Adam Yoder's car, exactly where the letter claimed Adam told her it would be found, the investigators immediately jumped to the insupportable conclusion, not that it corroborated the facts in the letter, but that it was the further proof of Katie's guilt. In reality, the fact that Adam R. Katie not only goes to one of the many bad acts that affect his credibility as a witness, but it also rebuts the prosecutor's evidence of a motive, which makes it material and not collateral, and evidence referring to the R, including Adam's inconsistent statement, should be admitted. The evidence of the motive is offered by the prosecution to prove intent, which is an element of the crime charged in the indictment. Since the evidence of the motive is offered as material evidence to prove an element of the crime, the defense has the right to offer evidence in rebuttal of the prosecution's evidence to a motive. Okay, so um, such evidence included Adam's statements, his testimony at trial, the people's opening and closing from the trial, all the evidence relating to the R of Katie Conley by Adam Yoder, as well as any evidence related to issues that might develop during the course of the trial. trial. Go here because they're just putting statutes in here. Okay. Here. The testimony would offer the jury an explanation for the crime other than the... Oh, hold on a second here. In responding to a prosecutor's evidence in support of a theory of guilt, a defendant may explain away the evidence, deny it, or advance new facts tending to prove a counter-proposition. The testimony would, the jury, would offer the jury an explanation for the crime other than the one advanced by the people. As it pertains to the instant case, the prosecution spent a substantial portion of the closing arguments putting forth its theory of motive based solely on Adam's testimony that Katie killed Mary Yoder because Katie was desperate to win Adam back and that somehow killing his mother would make him come back to her. Even if that theory wasn't illogical and absurd on its face, the proffered evidence would show that it's contrary to reality. Once Adam arred Katie, she didn't want to date him anymore. She told the police, during her interrogation on December 21st of 2015, how controlling Adam was and how his family was aware of his drinking problems and his fits of anger. Katie kept him at bay. Adam wanted Katie back, and his allegations that they had relations the night of the celebration of life is a lie, as is his allegation that they had relations on September 15th, 2015, on Storis Avenue in Utica is a lie. Katie Conley never had relations with Adam after he arred her in July of 2014. She was not a woman scorned, but a woman arred. The November 18th, 2014 phone call and text messages he sent Adam in October of 2014 about the R proved this. Witnesses will testify how Adam acted at the celebration of life when he was begging Katie to be with him. Katie had no motive to kill anyone, let alone Mary Yoder, and everything in that letter of November 23rd, 2015 is true. As noted, evidence of the R uh, to rebut the prosecutor's theory was with regard to motive should be admitted, as should the opening and closing statements regarding 
what the prosecution believed was the motive for the crime. This is true whether the people maintain the same theory as to motive in a retrial or if they change the theory of motive. Preclusion of this evidence would allow the prosecutors to unfairly take advantage of separate proceedings to advance inconsistent positions of separate juries, each unaware that the prosecutions advanced a conflicting position at a different proceeding. Okay, let's go. Let's get my, I need to go through all of that. Um, there is absolutely no doubt as to the people's theory with regard to the motive. ADA Lisi makes this clear in both her opening and closing statements. After reminding the jury the law does not require proof of motive, she boldly states, I also told you that the people did intend to provide you some evidence of motive. And ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you, the people have done that, done precisely that. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the motive in this case comes down to two words, Adam Yoder. She then goes to extrapolate that in the most absurd direction possible, Caitlin Conley wanted Adam Yoder back. And I submit to you, she poisoned Adam Yoder's mother, her boss, in hopes of bringing Adam Yoder back to her. As stated above, this Recitation bears no resemblance whatsoever to reality. Katie was not obsessed with bringing back the man who art her, the man who, who she rejected, the man who police had already been informed was abusive, violent, manipulative, a drunkard, and the proffered evidence will make that clear. The evidence is both factual and inconsistent with the people's position at the original trial and therefore are admissible whether used to rebut the motives as originally put forth or to show the inconsistent statements if the people choose to put forth a new motive or no motive at all. If the government chooses to change its strategy at successive trials and contradict its previous theories of this case and versions with the historical facts, the jury is entitled to be aware of what the government had previously claimed and accord whatever weight it deems appropriate to such information. During the December 21st, 2015 interrogation, Kate's demeanor is nervous, scared, crying, and concerned that the police are not believing her when she's telling them that she has a genuine fear of Adam because of his past brutality to her, especially in light of her experience with him aring her. She says that she's scared and tells Van Nemi, you know why, and you can't protect me implying that they couldn't protect her before, so she's scared she won't be able to be protected now. Katie told the police that she had also talked to Mary about the R, and Mary had asked her if she had filed a police report. Katie told Mary that she did, and Mary said she understood. She tells the police that Adam didn't take responsibility, as is evidenced in the fact that he doesn't even remember the R, and... It's recognized by Katie and Mary that Adam has problems. Included in the interrogation of December 21st, 2015 is a statement from Van Nemi when he is coercing Katie to take a voice stress test that such a test was 10 times more reliable than a polygraph. Katie refuses to take such a test at the end of the interrogation because she's scared and nervous and late for an engagement. If the prosecutor seeks to offer this evidence to the jury, the defense will not object if the defense is allowed to call our polygraph experts to rebut that testimony and be allowed to testify that the polygraph is more scientifically reliable than a voice stress test and that they administered the polygraph test to Katie on June 22, 2017 and found those tests scientifically reliable. Otherwise, the defense moves to redact those per portions of the video re uh, recording Referencing the voice stress test, on February 5th, 2016, investigator Van Demi and Nelson interrogated Katie for six hours, forcing her into exculpatory no responses as to whether she wrote the letter received November 23rd, 2015. Van Demi and Nelson harp on the fact that whoever wrote the letter is the killer and that they know that she did it and that she wrote the letter, but they just want to know why. Again, the possibility that the letter might have been sent because it contained the truth in the minds of the investigators never was considered. Faced with the situation that if she admits to writing the letter that she's confessing to killing Mary Yoder and at the same time realizing that the police have no intention 
of pursuing that line of investigation, she's going to deny it. That's common sense. But Van to me, and especially Nelson, don't stop there. Katie is continually badgered with why she did it, literally over 363 times, and she's never given a chance to explain any answers. That's because Nelson and Van Demi weren't interested in anything she had to say. They just wanted a confession and tried to fit a square peg into a round hole. The entire case is circumstantial evidence that hinges on the uh, proposition that Katie Conley ordered colchicine for the sole purposes of killing Mary Yoder and that she fact, in fact killed Mary Yoder by poisoning her on July 20th of 2015 at her office in the early afternoon. In order to, to convict Katie... The circumstances must naturally and logically lead to the inescapable conclusion that she's guilty. You can't pile inference upon inference in guesswork and speculation. Intent becomes a crucial element in an entirely circumstantial evidence case. Intent to kill Mary Yoder by colchicine poisoning had no had to exist almost a year before she died. In her opening statement, the assistant district attorney propounds the theory as reflected is in the indictment that the colchicine was purchased for the sole purpose of killing Mary Yoder and lists the circumstantial evidence that suggests that Katie was the individual who offered the colchicine, again, for the sole purpose of killing Mary Yoder. Those documents contain false information, which was submitted by Caitlin Conley for the purposes of committing or aiding or concealing the crime of murder in the second degree with regard to Mary Yoder. The strongest evidence of intent is motive. Katie Conley had no motive to kill Mary Yoder, and the ordering of the colchicine through all the cell phones and the computers could just as easily have been done by Adam, Mary, or William with the, for some other purpose than to kill Mary Yoder. Just proving the ordering of the colchicine is not enough. More is needed for the fact finder to infer the intent to kill. Proof of... Surreptitiously obtaining colchicine is insufficient. As stated in the verdict sheet, it must also be shown that the reason for purchasing the colchicine was to kill Mary Yoder. If it was not purchased with the express purpose at the time of purchase to kill Mary Yoder, the entire line of questioning who purchased the colchicine, what computers were used, what credit card was used, what machinations were used to obtain the drug is totally irrelevant. In fact, if the colchicine was ordered by or for any other purpose than to kill Mary Yoder, no matter who ordered it, insufficient evidence exists to convict as a matter of the law. It is submitted that not only is there insufficient evidence to prove that Katie Conley murdered Mary Yoder, there is insufficient evidence to prove that there was many murder at all. Even if one could say Mary ingested the colchicine around 1.15 or 1.30 at her office on July 20th, there's no proof that the colchicine was there or whether she bought it. No evidence that it's in any shake container in the office. All that can be proven is that Mary died ingesting colchicine. That probably came from a bottle found in Adam's car, but we don't know when she ingested it where, how, and most importantly, why. We don't know if she accidentally took it. We don't know if there was, it was in her pill organizer. We don't know if her husband, Bill, killed her since Neri sisters believe he had a strong motive. We don't know if Adam did it, but we do know that the person who had the least motive and opportunity is Katie, and there is insufficient evidence as a matter of law to prove the charges in the indictment. So that was because, um, again, Katie didn't have the motive to kill her. So let so then what happened to Mary Yoder? And um, what was the outcome there? And um, hold on one second. And she worked in a chiropractic office. She was hold on, chiropractor. Um, let me just get Even after reading that, and hold on one second, what 
don't know what's happened. I don't know, where did I just... Uh-oh. What happened to my document? Okay, so she happened to be convicted, okay, of killing Mary Yoder, and she was sentenced. But then there were arguments heard in the appeal of Caitlin Conley, and that was in 2020. So an appeal to the conviction um, of Caitlin, who was found guilty of manslaughter for the July of 2015 poisoning of Mary Yoder, was held in Rochester. And it was held in December of 2020. So she was sentenced January of 2018 to 23 years in the state prison after Oneida County jury found her guilty the previous November of first degree manslaughter. She was not found guilty of the second degree murder for the colchicine poisoning of her employer, who is a chiropractor, Mary Louise Yoder. She was previously tried in a and where it resulted in a hung jury and that was may of 2017 so her attorney simone shashin argued on behalf of her before the appellate judges and it was a virtual sentence of course because of because of the virus stating the evidence presented by the prosecution in the trial such as the high doses of colchicine did not indicate whoever killed mary yoder had done so accidentally there was no evidence of anything but an intention to kill here, and twice the jury rejected the notion that Katie murdered Mary. So they're saying it's this accidental thing, and but it didn't happen with Katie, they're saying. Okay, Oneida County Assistant District Attorney Stephen Cox argued that while the prosecution never advanced for the lesser charge of manslaughter, that is not required for the court to have issued it. It just happened at the end. The evidence you have seen lent itself to those inferences, and the argument was one of eight presented in writing by the defense, Oneida County District Attorney Scott McNamara. So, um, let's see. The argument of the lesser charge should... Okay, so let's see. There should be a decision on her appeal. Let's see, because that should have happened in January. So the court denied Caitlin's appeal. And this is actually uh, just happened in March. She lost her appeal of her conviction and sentence. She was initially charged with first degree murder in June of 2016 with her first trial of May 2016 ending in a hung jury. The New York State Appellate Court in Rochester on Friday ruled that the lower courts acted properly in both of Conley's trials and that Conley's sentence was not unduly harsh or severe, according to the court documents. Conley said in her appeal that a search warrant issued for her cell phone was obtained without probable cause and that statement she made to police prior to being arrested should not have been used during her trial. The court rejected those claims, according to the court documents. Conley worked for Yoder for four years at the chiropractic family care offices on Oriskany Boulevard in Whitesboro, New York. They have the Yoder along with her husband, William, operated that practice for 28 years. Okay. During the second trial, the defense pointed the figure at Adam, blaming him for the murder of his mother. During the first trial, the defense named William Yoder, Mary's husband, as the alleged killer. The prosecution has contended in both trials that Conley purchased that colchicine that was used to kill Mary Yoder. They also said there's evidence linking her to the vial used in the murder and the gift cards used to buy the colchicine. 
The defense has argued that Conley was a pawn, a naive girl who was framed for the murder by her controlling, abusive boyfriend. Defense attorney Frank Policelli said the evidence was nearly all circumstantial, while prosecutors said the evidence all points to Conley, according to the reports. Conley is at the Bedford Hills Correctional Facility in Westchester County, and she will be eligible to be considered for parole uh, in May of 2037. So that's something you might want to dive into more. It's really kind of a crazy case. First they said the husband was guilty of it, then the son, and then uh, Mary. I'm really crazy. What's this? What's this? Crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Um, hold on, the chat is catching up. Did I just see Kelly Finelli? Hi, Danny. Hi, AG Vintage. Hi, Julie Grayson. She thought Adam would need her and get back with her. It's crazy. Her brother-in-law already suggested to police that they said natural causes two years ago, but now she is saying she killed him and felt bad. What are you talking about, Julie? I don't know what Julie's talking about. I'm not talking about this case. Oh. You're not talking about this case. Okay. Casey Lynn says, I'm having a hard day. Anniversary of my daughter's murder was only a few days ago, and it's been hard. Hope everyone is staying safe. Pray for Brooks Channel. She's going through a lot. Oh, is she? Is she going? Casey Lynn, I'm really sorry about uh, that horrible anniversary, and I'm praying for you and Brooks Channel. Um, after Mary died, her husband started dating Mary's sister. Yeah, that's what they said. That's what they said. And you know what? I, I was, as I'm reading that, I'm realizing, no, the Yoder I know is probably a cousin of them. Yes, it's, it's not Mary. It's a different name. I thought it was Mary at first. And I'm like, well, this is too crazy. I'm glad it's not the person I knew. I think it must be, um, a relation on her husband's side. So that was, that's Okay feel better now about that. Um, first time you've heard of it, Deborah Van. What was the motive? Because uh, AJ, they're saying that if um, she got rid of the mother, that Adam would go back to Katie because she would need him. That's what the prosecution said. She, Kubi says she was a crazy psycho ex who wanted to get revenge to hurt Mary's son, in my opinion. Has passed out? Oh, you just mean fell asleep, I hope? Um, lively looking lady, AJ said, yeah. But, uh, weird. Now, colchicine is what? Is that a horse tranquilizer? What is that? Colchicine works by decreasing swelling and lessening the buildup of uric acid crystals that cause pain in infected joints. So what, what is colchicine used for? It's used for treating inflammation and pain. It can also be used to treat flare-ups of gout, prevent incre increased flare-ups of gout. Um, so why would you... Th is, hmm. It's used to treat gout.
beautiful to see. Hmm. I don't know. Side effects with the kidney. Colchicine toxicity. The dark side of the ancient drug. So it says um, it's used mainly for the prevention or treatment of gout. But uh, colchicine's toxicity is an extension of its mechanism of action because it binds to tubulin and disrupts the microtubular network. As a result, affected cells experience impaired protein assembly, decreased endocytosis and exocytosis, altered cell morphology, decreased cellular mortality, arrest of mitosis, an interrupted cardiac myocyte conduction, and contract contractility. The culmination of these mechanisms leads to multi-organ dysfunction and failure. Wow. Hmm. That doesn't sound good. It's a high mortality rate when missed. It's important to recognize its features, it says. And that's from the National Library of Medicine. Wow. Okay. Lessons from the courtroom. Colchicine is a dangerous jug if it is used. The prescribing physician should consider the pitfalls, carefully review the patient's medical and drug history. Hmm. Extremely, it says colchicine, extremely toxic and overdose. The fatal, it says colchicine toxicity, the fatal masquerader. So, yeah, so not good. So, oh. hi, April Cook. Hi, Bunny Darling. This is Mary Yoder, chiropractor from upstate New York. Utica. She was poisoned. Looks like, and the son's girlfriend was ex girlfriend was convicted of it. Okay, so that's that. I'm gonna put the um, I'm gonna put the hi gracefully. She had seven heart attacks. Bunny Darling said. Yeah, um, Say one thing. She suffered an excruciating and sudden death. And she was 60 years old. She ran a thriving upstate New York practice with her husband. She thought she had a stomach bug. Spent the night vomiting, then went to the hospital where she expected to stay overnight. However, by the time her three children headed to her side, she went into cardiac arrest several times. Yep.
She was in good shape, had an active lifestyle. That's a colchicine, an anti-gout drug. His car was an absolute mess when they found the drug. It's like completely littered with um, soda cans and everything. What's the matter? Oh gosh, that sounds crazy. Let's see. All right, so that's that's about that's about all there is about that now and I just uh, let me give the um, shoot let me put the number in slack if somebody wants to call in you can talk about this if you want to or you can talk about another case or ask a question or do whatever you want basically not really whatever you want, because it can't be something illegal or something. Um, I'm just going to put this in general. Debbie L., I see you got yourself situated. Okay. And where was I? Uh-oh. Okay. Lemon water is good for present preventing kidney stones. Hi, Eva Pohl. How are you? So, oh, we had a nice birthday uh, for Ethan. We had ice cream cake. My daughter was here. Son, my son and Roman came over. So, um, we were all here. And what did we do? We had cake. We had cake. Um... <laughs> Roman came over and then Desi drove Roman nuts. Roman's really laid back, so Desi's just crazy. And then Roman then Roman started to um, have amorous intentions with maybe with Sassy, which isn't good, so um, we had to separate them. But other than that, that went uh, okay. What else what did everybody else do? And then I had uh, a good meeting today. What I had to have a good meeting about, I have to have another meeting next week. And let me see. What flowers did you get this month? I got roses. Did you see them? I got roses. My son just said, are those the roses that we get? Are those the flowers that we get mom for that? And then he said, that's a lot of money for that. He's like, I can get, so I said to my daughter, well, then you should give him the money and he should bring flowers to me every month. Uh, Cause he says he can get a lot better flowers for that price. But I got roses this month, Kevin. They were over, they're right over there. I'll go get them, I'll show them to you. Uh, I'll be right there. Anybody wants to call in the numbers there? Oh boy. Are they showing how Michael the cheesecake? Huh? Are they showing how Michael the cheesecake? No, Kevin wants to see the flowers. Oh, okay. Well, I said he says he could buy them cheaper and bring them, bring me more. Okay. That's what I got. This is like kind of, this is how it came in. This, I don't know why that's hanging. It's like some kind of, sometimes I put some weird uh, foliage in there. But they're all different color. Roses. That's what I got. Okay. Um, who's going to call in? Scooter, um, she finally took a picture of Dave on his tractor and then they went out and they had pizza and it looked like somebody put happy birthday with sausage on Dave's pizza.
Hi, 61. I hope you had a happy birthday. And Patricia Bassett, happy birthday. And one of Peggy Kay's kids, I know, is a happy birthday. And who else did we say? I don't know who else we said was having. Is two scooter driving. I told her she better get a ride on the John Deere tractor. She, she said, like, excuse me, what? I don't know what she meant by that. It's not a family party until you have to separate the pups. Exactly. Exactly. My son is like, he's so funny. I'm like, my gosh, you're like so... He's like watching, oh, I've got to watch over it. I said, gosh, I can't even imagine when you have a kid. And he's like, oh, well... You know, he's not used to this. He's an only dog. He's very quiet, very laid back. So then we said, I bet you he won't even miss you if you go outside. And then he's like, yeah, he will. So he went outside. But then Jimmy and I were playing with him. As soon as he came in, he jumped so high to see him. But he's, you know, he's like, good. Then you can keep him for the week. But, um, hi, Sully. Very, very cute. 14, honey, 14. So. Oh, two cooters here. It's cooters. It's cooters. What the heck is that, Scooter? 14. So, what is that, Scooter? Why does it say I was on mute? Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me, Scooter? Yes. I can hear you. Can everyone else hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, what is that doll, Scooter? It's just an old doll. Is, did you just buy that today? No, I've had it. I've had it. You had it over there? Yeah, I had forgotten it here last summer. Why does it have something? Was, what is it? I in just a, left it here. Is it in a doll stand or something? Wait, what? Is it in a doll stand? Yeah, it came with the doll stand. I bought it years and years ago. Wow, she looks a little, really comfy. <laughs> Don't you remember her? I've shown her. I know. Her eye looks a little bit half shut. Yeah, one is, you know, one's open and one's closed. Her tag says 19. Hi, Nanatee. Good night, Nanatee. 58. 19 what? 58? 58. Huh. Yeah. I'm thinking these might have been some of some dolls my mom gave me years and years ago. Yeah. You know, some of the old ones that I have. How was Dave's birthday pizza? It was good. It was, you know, that was cute, wasn't it? How they did that? Mm hmm Did you get a birthday pizza or you shared that one? No, we both got one. Because they're little. Did they write know? did they write it on yours? Did they write something on yours? Not my birthday. They didn't write I have them to do that, and Dave got all embarrassed about it. He did? Yes, he's like, don't tell them that, Daddy. <laughs> I'm like, oh, come on, it's your birthday. He's like, yeah, but then it's not going to be spread out properly. Oh, my goodness gracious. I know, right? I'm like, Dave, it's going to be fine. Not spread out properly. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he looked so excited riding his tractor. Did he? <laughs> no, he looked pissed. <laughs> he he never looks excited. I know, right? Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, AJ Vintage and Danielle C. Kevin, Cubie, John Sneed, 
Deborah Vancouver and Casey. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So yeah, so did he give you a ride on it or did he let you ride it around? Oh, he made me drive it because he wanted me to see how I liked it. Yeah, did you like it? Yeah, it's comfortable. Yeah. 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 And you had a good so, meeting with your neighbor and stuff? Uh-huh, yeah, I went over and talked to her. and did she have coffee and cake for you? Oh, she would have. She, I always take my own drink though. She's always trying to you know, give me little treats and whatnot. And you think they might be poisoned? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Hi, Lisa Hobbs. Tina Bina, AJ Vintage. Hi, Lisa Hobbs. Martin. She has her surgery tomorrow, doesn't she? Who, Lisa Hobbs? No, Sharon Martin. Oh, my gosh. Sharon Martin, you have surgery tomorrow? Remember, she's going to have that so uh, soldier. So shoulder. Oh, no, the rotator cuff? Uh, yeah, something with her sh uh, shoulder. Oh, my goodness. Is that tomorrow, Sharon? I think it is. Hi, Shar Shar. Prayers for you, Sharon. Help you get through that good. Prayers and tomorrow, Lane. She does. Hello. Oh, prayers for Sharon. She's got a big surgery tomorrow. Pray for her. Hi, Julian Gonzalez. She doesn't have a neck break. <laughs> it looks like it, doesn't it? Hi, Julie. Casey. Oh. Hi, Henny. Hi, and Dina, Elizabeth, and Carol Plant. Casey. Carol. Hey, Scooter, I'm going to need you to look up the something to dead silence, the trailer to dead silence. It's so scary. Ooh. Okay. What is that? Dead silence. Um, I don't know. I've never heard of it. it. Must be a scary movie. Good night, Graceful Lily. You're going to miss my live. We're going to start my live in five minutes. Do you realize I have two sleeps until I get the puppy? Oh, that's it? That's it. So, not tonight. Not tomorrow night. But Thursday night, she should be right here. That's going to be so cute. Now, the picture you showed us, is that how she looked in person when you saw her on the Zoom meeting, that little? Or mm -hmm. was she bigger? No, she was little like that. Oh. She was little like that. Desi was, Desi was bigger because we got Desi. Desi was born in August. And we got Desi in November. So he was like... Almost like 11 weeks when we got him. And this one was born on February 14th. So this April 14th. She's not even, wait. She's not even eight weeks. I mean, just shy of eight weeks. Oh, wow. And you are going to call, well, yeah, you guys are calling her Lucy. Yeah, I believe so. That's perfect. Now, was Ellie... Um, Upset about Lucy because she was looking up. No, she's all set everything. on Lucy. She wants Lucy. Oh, does she? Okay, good. Mm -hmm. It won't let you tag me, Julianne Gonzalez. Carolyn might have it set up like that. No. <laughs> I'm worried about David's. Uh, where is Davida? Davida. She hates us now, I think. I think Davida. she I think she really hates me because of that wreath comment about that she made it prior that she recycled it. No. Yeah, she's really pissed about it, I think. She is not. She's not upset because I've been using her tagline. It's only because I love it. No, I think she's oh she's yeah, she's definitely pissed about that and she's pissed about the wreath comment I made. She hates us both. Oh my Davida. I won't use it anymore. Sorry about the wreath comment, Davida. I'll switch it around. You don't or have to. Really sorry. You don't have to hate us. No. It's a little bit of an overreaction. Her, what does she say, Rima? Because I don't want to use it. Right. I'll, I'll switch it up. 
Something like, um, remember there's only one you. Did don't ever forget? Is does she say don't ever forget? Or does she say always remember? Who was the one? Remember that sitcom they used to go, always remember and never forget? There was a sitcom like that. Who said that in that sitcom? Always remember and never forget. You don't know what I'm talking about? No. Who remembers it? There was a sitcom, Always Remember and Never Forget. Hi, Jennifer Risha. The chat is moving so slow. Who remembers Always Remember and Never Forget? Hold on. I don't even know. I'm trying to get to my other chat because this chat is too slow. Because remember, there's only one you in this world as a special, more special, as a special place because you're in it. Something the like world that. is a better place, a better place it's because better you're place in it, I think. Yeah, but then there's there's something else too. But there's always remember and never forget. Something like that. Penny, you can't either? I don't know. They can't ta know tag you because you're not in the chat. That's what it is. Once somebody's not in the chat, you can't tag them, I don't think. Yeah, because other people were, I think. That's probably because oh. you were... Oh, there's Dave walking behind you. He doesn't have a knife, does he? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know where he went. I thought I saw him walking behind you. <clears throat> okay, I just uh, Is that typed something. Oh, okay, there. see? Uh -huh. Are you going to drive the tractor on your um, video tomorrow? I wasn't planning on it, but you never know. Oh, you should have, you should didn't take a video of a five second video of him driving. I did, yeah. I just haven't put it up yet. But oh, I did. okay. Is it five seconds? <laughs> yes. Okay, good. Be a 10 second one. Oh my gosh, people are gonna go crazy. Is it really gonna be 10 seconds? It might be. Wow. Hi, Julie W. They're in, the Daniel C. They're in the for night. they're they're in for a real treat. Always remember and never forget. Nobody remembers. That's the poem they used in what movie, Casey Lynn? It was in a sitcom. I'm telling you, it was in a sitcom. It's always remember and never forget. It was like Happy Days at Laverne and Shirley or something. Let me see. I'll, I'll, I'll look it up myself. Now it's working. Sorry. I, yeah, I didn't know you had to do that. Leah Jane, hi. One day at a time, Leah Jane saying... Was it from that? I'm going to check it out. It might be. I, I a heart made wide. You're right. I think it is one day at a time. Let me see. Always remember. Wasn't that, uh, what's his name? The, the, the superintendent. What was his name? Schroeder? Pat Harrington. Yes. 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 Always yes. remember and please never forget. Mm-hmm. I yeah. sport me, sport me stuff. I am Bradley. Oh, she has clothes on. Yeah, she's, see, she's wearing a knitted jumper. Crocheted. Crocheted, I mean. And she has little socks and shoes. Always remember and never forget. Yeah. Tavita Lane is no longer. The bestest yet. And no longer um, liking us. She's um, not liking us anymore. Doesn't like us anymore. Why don't you like us anymore? I'm going to send her a message. Well, your tagline, I promise. I won't anymore. But I have one similar, but I'm not going to be like yours. Well, she's not going to come and use the massage chair anymore. She won't get the eggplant or anything. Right, and she won't have a place to come and fall asleep. She needs us to fall asleep. You hate us? You're calling her Chucky's sister. <laughs> Maybe she got arrested. <laughs> no, I'm serious, because remember that stuff about her husband and the Rose Garden and stuff? 
What was that? Because I missed that. I, I didn't understand what you were talking well, about. Well, she was saying stuff about her husband getting, you know, driving her crazy when he retired. And then I said, you know, come to think of it. She hasn't said much about her husband in a long, long time. And she was saying how much she was on her case driving her crazy. And how, and I said, and didn't she put in a new rose garden recently? Ooh. Yeah. That might have hit a little close to home. I don't know. I, I haven't seen her after that. Right. Don't be mean about my baby. Don't be jelly. And why didn't you understand the thing that I sent you? Um, the first two I could not make out. Really? Really, for real. Wow. Something about red. Did you say the word red? No. Did Dave give you a ride on the tractor? Is he sharing or oh, something? Oh, okay. Yeah. I was, I was red and right. No, I listened to it a few times. Hmm. <laughs> She's not going to call you again, she said. Look at Sharon. What did Sharon say? Sharon said, Two Scooter, can you please toss a towel over that, please? <laughs> Don't be jelly, Sharon. Oh, let me show you the card I made tonight. Um, oh, yes. This doll is very much wanted in the doll collection world. I've had doll collectors offer me money you would not believe for this little thing. And I turn it down. I think she was pasted together, for real. Jennifer Rochelle, but yeah, you know, I've always thought something was different. Her body doesn't match her arms. The head is definitely genuine. Her arms are genuine. But her torso does look like it's, you know, much lighter. Um, and her legs feel the same as the torso. But see her little arms and her head are more of a pliable plastic. And she is worth a lot of money. The collectors, they go nuts when I show her. Show her. Now you made this? Mm -hmm. I made the envelope too. Did you? I, I love did. that. Yeah. And it says, it's a game, level up. Oh. And and then inside it has the play buttons and the message and just a little card. Love that. I made it on the Cricut. Level up. Did you like it? Yes, he liked it. That is so cute. It is. See, that saves you a lot of money because... <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Because you only pay four hundred dollars and then ten dollars for every bit of card stock, and the card only ends up costing you fifteen dollars. No, <laughs> in the long run, it'll even out after you've made eighty-seven hundred cards. You'll actually be saving money. No, <laughs> it's fine though. No, I mean, yeah, exactly. I'm just teasing. Mm -hmm. um, Antimon says that uh, she's from nineteen fifty-eight. And there's a price tag on her that I can't reveal, but the original price tag is here. Does anybody want to buy her? I mean, does anybody have a bid? Like Sharon to told me to take the money and run. <laughs> <laughs> you had a good day. Good high 61. I'm glad you did. I pay to watch. Um. AJ oh, I'm glad you have a high, uh, good day, high 61. I wish AJ Vintage would show us some stuff. I know. AJ Vintage, why? I was Moo in here? I thought she was in here earlier. I can't believe to be the hate so. I can't either. Where did that doll come from? Hi, Brooks Channel. How are you? Um <laughs> No, uh -uh. Very, very wanted collected doll. 
collector's doll. I've had her for many, many years. Who is that, Scooter? Who? Sounded like a little child coughing. Well, she has been running a fever. Did anybody hear that little child cough? That's, that's Dave. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the first one sounded like a little child. <laughs> Not that one. The first one was very slight, like, <laughs> like so, like very little. Oh wow, that was scary, Scooter. Okay. <laughs> what? <is> it? <laughs> yeah, it was scary. Davida, Davida, Davida. Uh, yeah, I'm worried about Davida hating us. Well, she was in here last night, and then she left. Oh, she was, and she left. Oh, Lou is here. She just messaged and said, I'm here. I'm shopping. She sh oh, I wonder what she's buying. I wonder what she's buying. <laughs> it's all coffee. Oh, you're in a lot of pain. Who's in Earth a lot of pain? Who? I'm in a lot of pain. Kidney stones. Oh, no. No, mommy is scared. Two, Casey. Good job. Oh, gosh. Oh, Ann Bradley's son's 40th birthday today. Who's who? Vera Bradley's? Ann Bradley's. Oh, Ann Bradley. Happy birthday to your son. I wonder if she's related to Vera. Oh, possibly, right? Can you imagine? That would be very different. It really would. You heard that California had an earthquake on April 5th. Ooh. Jane, that's your birth, your birth year too, 1958? Oh my goodness. I think we would have heard from Davida if it was the earthquake that displaced her. Right, yes. Yeah. Yep. I'm really sure we heard that. Davida, I will not use your tagline anymore. You're going to think of one using synonyms. Yeah, synonyms. The world right. is a superior, um, superior environment thanks to you being in it or some thanks to your existence. Um, right. Yeah, she uses world. Um, oh. I'm just going to say something like, and don't forget, Mars has no one. On its surface, but, but if you were on its surface, it would be the best planet in the solar system. No, you could say, remember that if you were in here, um, it would be a really unhappy place because you're special and no one's like you ever. It's been created before. I don't know. Yeah, but that, that is good. I like that. That's still too close to hers. Remember, no one can take your place. <laughs> no, that's why she's not here. Remember, no one can take your place. You're truly unique. And I'm glad that you're in my life. <laughs> that's good, too. Sometimes she forgets what she says anyway because they went and I asked her and she had to think about it. I have to think about it too sometimes. Because sometimes she has a longer version of it. And then sometimes she does a short version. Yeah. Sometimes she just says, remember the world's a better place because you're in it. And then she has another one like, you're uniquely you, blah, 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 blah. the world's a better place because you're in it. Like she says this whole bunch of stuff before it. But she doesn't always use that one. Right. Sure, sure, she's not Chucky's daughter. <laughs> she's a pretty little girl. She's tired, aren't you? Me? Yes. <laughs> uh, a little bit. Hey, did that um, person ever answer me back in the other thing? Yes. Is she able to make that? Because the other person is able to make it. Yes. Oh, she is able to? 
Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> what? Jennifer, she's not ready for bed. She stays up late, like me. I'll just say, I don't know, something like, remember, out of all the planets in the universe, I'm so happy that you ended up on this planet. How about that? The world is a better place because you're in it, she says. The planet, the planet is happy because you're in this place with I'm us. I'm really happy. The planet. Yes. The planet is superior planet because of your presence. Yes. Where is Davida? I'm going to see Joanne with her uh, little remote today showing me how she, I asked her how her TV setup works, you know? Right. And she brought over the remote? No, I was at her house. Oh, no, but when she came over while we were on the phone, you said something like, I do want to see it, but I'm on the phone right now, and I could be on for a long time. <laughs> she was showing me some, uh, she had a photo of her racehorse. Oh. She used to have, which she's shown me before, but. I spilled whipped cream. I had the whipped cream when I was whipping it today. It came all out of the bowl, and it went all over my hair and all over my sweater and everything. Oh my goodness, really? Yeah. And then Jimmy kept saying, it's all in your hair. And I had just taken a shower. It's like, so pissed. So then um, I wash it out again. But it was I still see bits of it on my sweater. Oh. I told Dave I wanted to make him that ice cream cake. And he said, no, don't bother. Did he say that? No, he said, no, he Sounded happy about it. Really? I'd, lo I'd love to hear him happy. You should, like, silently tape him happy about something. He's just very, what do you call it? I, uh, grumpy? <laughs> no, he really isn't. I mean, you think he is, but he really isn't. Can you, can you see this at all or no? It's hard to tell. I can't get my screen to go double. You know how... You'll be on one side and I'll be on the other. Right. It's just shown in the corner. I see myself reflecting in that pizza. Oh. I was trying to wonder. Do you want me to show a picture of the pizza? Can you see it now? I could just show a picture of the pizza. I could just okay. take it right off the, the, th the thing. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, okay. It's so darn cute. Okay. Um, oh, you put you put a new um. You changed your whole Facebook. No, I only put up three new pictures. That was no, it. you put a whole new thing on the top of it. I didn't mean to. Oh, I didn't. That must have been a mistake. Well, you did. Oh, I need to change it. Why that? Oh, I'll just check when I. You know, it says happy H A P P Y, and then it says B apostrophe D. Happy B day. No. Can I show Dave on his new tractor? Yeah, sure. Okay. I'll show you Dave on his new tractor. <laughs> Dave, didn't, Dave didn't sound happy about that. Dave looks so excited. I put on this. Dave looks so excited. It's cute, right? Isn't that cute, though, that the kid did that there? He was happy to do it. He's like, oh, I can do something really cute. I know what to do. What is that thing in the back of Dave that looks like you might hang people from there or something? 
that's that where we put that swing and no, oh, okay, yeah, chair thingies. Oh, no, no mm -hmm. handles, they didn't have any, I guess. Davida, Davida, come out wherever you are. Well, it, where are you sitting with Dave in like a booth and slunk down? Is that at the pizza place? Yeah, you both yeah. sit on the same side of the booth. No, we just did for oh, that picture. just for the picture, okay. What? <laughs> Dave's got such a look on his face. <laughs> you can't take it. Then that Somebody looks... said Dave looks scared or something. <laughs> <laughs> it it is very it was very good, Lori, Polly. Monocles really Jane's mom? Yes, I really like your pizza. Yeah, I'll show you Joanne. I don't know if you guys will think she's funny, but I think she's cute and funny and sweet. Okay. Trying to get the news on. I asked her oh, if you can see the news. It's listening. You have to hit that microphone, remember? Come on. <laughs> I don't want West. I want a news. Damn it. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, okay, let's see. I had a different one. It's a little bit longer. Come on now. <laughs> say something else to it. Get on the ball. Get on the ball. Let's hear you talk. <laughs> She cracks him up. I'm able to hear you. The hell do you want me to do? Scream at you. <laughs> Is that Asner still alive? the end of it. <laughs> She's so funny. <laughs> what? <laughs> I just listened to some of your pictures. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I just saw a picture of a guy. I think it's Dave. What? <laughs> I just saw a picture of a guy that I'm sure is... <laughs> That I'm sure is Dave. <laughs> but he looks so mad. <laughs> you going to bed? <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't see you. It's dark. 
can't see you in the dark. Okay. Be in there in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? I said I'm looking at a picture from 2015, and the guy has to be Dave. <laughs> he looks so mad. What? What's the picture? Let's see. He's. You want me to show it to you? Yeah. Okay. Well, you can show everybody. I'll show everybody. I don't know what, because I don't know which one it is. <laughs> Dave Vintage, I'm laughing along with y'all, and I don't know why. Is that Dave? That's Dave, right? Um, let me see. It hasn't come up yet. I just want to find one picture of Dave really smiling. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find one of him really smiling. <laughs> it's Dave and my dad. There's my cousin, Carrie. <laughs> Jude Scooter, did you see Sharon's finger? Yes, oh, I, I found did. One. I found one of Dave smiling. I did see that, Danielle. I found one of Dave smiling. You did? I did. That's the first time I've ever seen Dave smile. <laughs> That's always how Dave is. Let's see. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, you haven't seen it yet. You know why? why? Because he's had quite a few. Is that Dave? <laughs> what? Is that Dave? <laughs> yeah, is it Dave? Wait, I'm trying to lighten my phone. You're behind him. With like a Chicago, what is that, a Chicago Cubs or a oh, Colts me? or something? Yeah, that's you behind him. Wow. You're sneaking down behind him? Yeah, I see. Right? Yeah, I guess. You, you don't guess? You don't know if that's you? I guess that is us, yeah. That, come on, everybody knows that scooter. Yeah, it is. It, it is. I'm, I'm trying to figure out whose house that is, even. Oh, Thank wait. you, Mike. Thank you, Mike, for the super chat. Thank you. Fourth of July. That's at Mark's office for Fourth of July. That's at Mark's office? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you're, is who's who is that your brother? Is one of those other guys your brother? No, um, that is the one right next to Dave is his sister's husband and the brother-in-law of the sister's husband. Brother-in-law of the sister's husband. Because we always get a crowd of family there for the 4th of July. Because, okay. you know, the fireworks are there. and the, uh, Oh, okay. The and you're thing. like, you're sneaking behind the chair, like. Yeah, that house, Julianne Gonzalez, that house is from, um, gosh, what year did Mark say that house is? 1902 or something like that? That's a very old house that he has his office in. Yeah, right, AJ Vintage. He always gets super happy with his liquid refreshment. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. loves his, I told him that tonight, too. I'm like, he's like, well, because, you know, I just don't like being a spectacle. And I'm like, Dave, spectacle. Come on, you're an AJ. <laughs> Is Rocky up, Allie? Yeah. What did he, what, who's up? I asked her if Rocky was up. Oh. She said, Rocky, yeah. what's up? Rocky's I told him, he said, you know, you're all grown up now. It's time to get over that. Mm -hmm. Is he the youngest child? No, he's the middle. Oh. Could be that. Yeah, I think it is. Because once he has a few, you know, a few beers, he's all Mr. Happy and never stops talking. But like I said, he'll repeat the same thing over and over and over. Brooke sent you an email. 
I told her to. I know you can't play it for us, but I wanted... Okay, I'll check it out later, okay? Thanks. I'll check it out. Sully, Mommy Ramblings, would it be possible for you to look at the email that I sent you a few days ago? Oh, okay, Sully. Did you send me a um, social media? Um, you just sent me a social media profile if you have Facebook or something. Did you send that? I'll try to get it done tomorrow. Sully, keep, I keep saying I'm going to send MRB a link to my Facebook but I'm actually in Slack. I have to send somebody a bunch of links on something I forgot. Yeah, Deborah, she, Dave has his beer about every night. He likes to kick back with a few beers. Nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of people in my Scotty group. This one lady, she, um, I got scared. I'll tell you, I'll read this to you and I'll tell you why I got scared. Even though my, my breeder's on the website. Um, I, I don't know why I got scared. I just did. Casey Lynn says to tell you that it's the trailers for Dead Silence and the boy. If you don't scare easy, I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh, oh I know the boy. I've seen the boy. That's that one about the doll. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This lady said, uh, um, let's see. What are you eating, your chocolate? No, it's a Smarty. But wait a minute, someone said we're obsessed by Scottish Terry. Okay. So many people are saying the same thing I did. It's almost impossible to find puppies. What the heck gives, right? A lot of people saying that. Uh, but a lot of people coming home with puppies this week. Anyway, let me see. Okay, so this lady said, I'm not going to say any names here. I don't want to, you know, bash anybody. Um, but am I in the wrong? I need to not make the same mistake twice. She said, my husband and I were all lined up to get a female Scotty. The deposit was paid. Unfortunately, for the first litter, there was not enough females, so we waited for the next litter, which they were born on February 11th. Now, from time to time, I understand that sometimes hold on now, the puppies get sick, which was the case with our puppy. After, oh. after asking the not-registered breeder what the illness was many times, she continued to tell me how sorry she was. I thought the worst, naturally. However, it turned out to be a type of treatable worm. She provided the name of the medication, which was fine. She did notify us to say that the puppies were doing much better and going for their first vaccination last Thursday. And they'll be ready to go to their forever homes April 10th. We were so excited, and of course, we got our home ready for the new puppy, which they already named Arrival. Now the breeder was aware that we do have a six-year-old female Scotty Westy mix and wanted to have the health report from the vet to be able to show our vet only because we wanted to be sure that the puppy was healthy enough come to our home knowing that we wanted to protect our dog even though she is up to date on her vaccinations. It was more to be on the safe side for both dogs. While reluctant, she did provide only a bare minimal sheet with no info on which puppy or how they were doing, only showing a check mark to show they were vaccinated. And after providing us with the contact information for her vet, in the same sentence, she had decided she was keeping the puppy because she felt like we were asking too many questions and did not trust her word. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I was completely devastated and in disbelief that she did this and I apologize thinking that there was a miscommunication and we only wanted to be sure the puppy was getting the green light from our vet. So I did, so did I push her too far with my questions? I thought you could never ask too many because when the puppy was sick, I wanted to be sure it was safe for both her puppy and mine to be together. Even if the puppy still needed more meds, we were okay as long as we had a full disclosure of her health. So again, did I do something wrong? Thanks in advance for your honest replies. I'm not looking 
for bashing this breeder, more for my own well-being. And I freaked out. I didn't even look, look. I said, oh my gosh, could that be the female puppy that I'm getting? So, but then I, I should have just read this thing because it says she wasn't registered, number one. They were born right. February 11th. So I said, oh my gosh, where was your breeder located? It was Canada. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just scared me. But I guess there were a lot of puppies born at that time. I bet that scared you because you had a heck of a time trying to get one. Mm -hmm. But there were other people in here saying they had a heck of a time trying to get one. Um, right. So, I mean, what kind, you know, how long have you been looking? Like a year, right? Yeah, just about. Or longer. About a year. Yeah, about a year. What I thought. So this one said... We recently lost our Scotty after a one and a half in year cancer fight. We want another female. It seems that a lot has changed in 14 years, and it's difficult to find a breeder. I've contacted five, and only two responded. One was short with us and didn't say if they were going to breed or not, or take our info for the future. The other one was immediately sketchy. Am I missing something? And then the answers were... Um, steer away from somebody. She's a scammer. Okay, it's not my lady. Thank goodness. Um, somebody said, "What? Are, where are you located?" I have one Wheaton and one Black. I really said one Wheaton. My bad, Wheaton. Um, do you have references? And then crickets, they said. <clears throat> Let's see. Oregon, somebody said. If a breeder has puppies, they're extremely busy. Don't take it the wrong way. Everyone has a bad day. Tell me about it. I want a Scotty so badly. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, what's the big thing with them, with Scotty? So, I mean, they're definitely cute. I'm just wondering, though, like, what made you really like them so much? Just curious. Well, I found out a long time ago that my mother said it was her favorite dog, even though we never had one. I, I don't know why, but um, so it always stuck with me, that part. And then when we got the Westie, I was like, the Scotty is black and it doesn't show dirt. Like, I guess I always wanted one, and then, I don't know. Well, the Westies and Scotties are kind of similar, right? Kind, kind of. Yeah, they're both, you know, dogs from the Highlands, Scottish Highlands. But, right. But um, the, the Westie has a shorter face. Scotty has a longer face. Julianne, I can tell there's absolutely nothing there for the plumbing. I just took a little uh, look-see myself. Well, she's got to have something because she has a hole in her mouth. Well, yeah, but remember? What? I believe the torso is from a different doll. I think they cheated. Oh, really? Yeah, because it doesn't match. There's nothing for the water to come out? No. Oh, dear. I'll look again, but All right. with this little jumper on it. Oh, dear. Okay, there's a little bottom, you know. Yeah. Cute little bottom. But, but is there a hole in the middle? Nope. Oh. Uh-uh. You'd have to drill one in. No, so they overlooked that part, you know? Yeah. So that, yeah. Yeah, so if you gave her a bottle, what would happen? It would just, she'd get a bunch of sloshy water in her. Exactly. Yes, you would. Wow. I didn't, I didn't even think of that, but you're right, you know? Yeah. It would probably come back out her mouth. Yeah. Which would be like she was vomiting. <laughs> Poor little thing. Poor little thing would be vomiting. That wouldn't be nice. Mm -mm. Nope. But uh, I don't know. It's kind of a, a lazy night, right? Yeah. 
I'm almost done with this diamond painting, so. What one? The one that I've only been working on for a couple of weeks, the oh. uh, landscape. Oh, yeah, okay. You got your light and everything? Yeah, because I'm using the light and it goes a lot quicker. Okay. In that thing. All right. Well, love ya. Love ya. I think we're going to go tonight because you guys are like really subdued in the chat and everybody's subdued on the panel and Davida hates everyone and it's kind of depressing that Davida hates us and I have to go in my massage chair and kind of get over that a little bit. But Sharon, yeah. we're thinking about you tomorrow. Um, yeah, Sharon. Yeah, prayers for a successful surgery and um, have your husband, if you can, uh, just let me know that you got out of surgery and everything is good. Yes, because we'll be wanting to know. Everybody will be wanting to know how did Sharon make out. So prayers for Sharon for successful surgery and for Brooke's channel, for her kidney stones and for Casey for um, all of she's bad days and then for Nana Patty for her sister and then we had um, and Shelly's out of the and, hospital. And, oh yeah, Shelly. Yeah, what happened? Uh, the cardiologist said everything. Look normal with her heart, and then it was maybe just some fluid buildup, and she just has to go to his office, you know, and keep in touch. And they let her go today. They put her on some steroids last night, and it yeah. started. It went made the pain go away. What about the lump moment. in her neck, though? Uh, she's like I said before. They said maybe fluid. She oh. didn't bring it, so I don't know. But she's oh. home. Yeah, that's good. But of course, according to her, she doesn't believe them when they said there's something wrong. Oh, really? She leaves and then says that she's not relieved? She still thinks there's something wrong? Yeah. I don't know if she was kidding or not. Oh, oh, okay. I don't know. All right. Well, hopefully. Danielle, I know it was my fault. Uh, Danielle, good night, everyone. Hugs to everyone. Yeah, good night, everyone. Tomorrow's another day. See you guys. But uh, bye, Mike. Love Thanks for the super chat. Thank you guys for everything. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, Dolly. Bye. Uh, goodbye. Happy birthday, Ethan, Dave, to um, Patricia Fashet, Hi61, and uh, Peggy Case, Child, and oh, whoever else.